From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Wednesday, July 28, 2021. Microsoft rushes fix for Petit Potom attack proof of concept. Following up on a story we brought you on Monday, Microsoft has been quick to respond with a fix to an attack dubbed Petit Potam that could force remote Windows systems to reveal password hashes that could then be easily cracked. To thwart an attack, Microsoft recommends system administrators stop using the now deprecated Windows NT LAN Manager, NTLM, to prevent relay attacks on networks with NTLM enabled. Domain administrators must ensure that services that permit NTLM authentication make use of protections such as extended protection for authentication or signing features such as SMB signing. Apple releases urgent zero-day bug patch for Mac, iPhone and iPad devices. The update is for a flaw that Apple said may have already been actively exploited, making it the 13th such vulnerability it has patched since the start of this year. Arriving less than a week after the release of iOS 14.7, iPadOS 14.7 and macOS Big Sur 11.5 to the public, the patch fixes a memory corruption issue in the I.O. Mobile frame buffer component that could be abused to execute arbitrary code with kernel privileges. The timing of the update raises questions about whether the Zero Day had any role in compromising iPhones using NSO Group's Pegasus software, which has become the focus of a series of investigative reports on mobile phone-based spyware tools. Google launches new Bug Hunters Vulnerability Rewards platform. Google has announced a new platform and community designed to host all its vulnerability rewards programs under the same roof. Since launching its first program more than 10 years ago, the company has rewarded over 2,000 security researchers from 84 different countries for reporting over 11,000 bugs. In all, Google says that the researchers have been rewarded over $29 million since January 2010. This new site brings Google, Android, Abuse, Chrome and Play closer together and provides a single intake form that makes it easier for bug hunters to submit issues. It has also launched a new Bug Hunter University, which would allow bug hunters to brush up on their skills or start a hunting learning streak. Student walks off with $50,000 after finding gaping hole in Shopify software repos. Computer science student Augusto Zanalato received the reward following his discovery of a publicly available access token which gave the world read and write access to the Shopify's source code repositories. Zanalato uncovered the vulnerability while investigating a third-party electron-based Mac OS application created by a Shopify developer. I can't share the name, Zanalato told the register, but I can say it's a desktop client for a popular video conferencing platform which doesn't provide an official one. End quote. The Canadian e-commerce giant took the issue very seriously. It revoked the access token within 24 hours and granted the vulnerability a CVSS severity score of 10, the highest possible. And now a word from our sponsor, Veronis. The first time we got hit with ransomware, it took us weeks to recover. The second time we got hit, it took us two hours. Why? Because we had Veronis. Veronis reduces the ransomware blast radius and monitors our most important data automatically. Hear more at veronis.com forward slash risk. That's veronis, V-A-R-O-N-I-S dot com forward slash risk. Microsoft Teams now automatically blocks phishing attempts. Safe Links is a feature in Defender for Office that provides URL scanning and time-of-click verification of URLs and links in email messages, groups, and other locations. Safe Links can help protect enterprise organizations from malicious links sent by threat actors behind phishing attempts and other attacks. This new Safe Links protection is now generally available to all Teams users and works for links in conversations, group chats, and Teams channels. However, since there is no Safe Links policy enabled by default, admins will have to create one or more policies to get the protection of Safe Links to activate it. The US now has new cybersecurity rules for pipelines. The federal government has launched new regulations requiring owners of critical pipelines that transport hazardous liquids and natural gas to implement urgently needed protections against cyber intrusions. This is the second time since May that the Department of Homeland Security has issued a cybersecurity directive aimed at U.S. pipeline operators. It comes in the wake of the colonial pipeline hack that disrupted fuel supplies across the southeastern U.S. for days. 
The security directive requires critical pipelines to take defensive measures to protect themselves from ransomware attacks and other known threats to IT systems. Pipeline owners must also have a cybersecurity contingency and recovery plan in place. APT Group hits IIS web servers with deserialization flaws and memory resident malware. A sophisticated, potentially government-sponsored threat actor has been compromising major public and private organizations over the past year by exploiting deserialization flaws in public-facing ASP.NET applications to deploy fileless malware. Dubbed Praying Mantis, or TG1021, by researchers from incident response firm Signia, the hacker group puts a strong focus on detection evasion by using a volatile and custom malware toolset built specifically for Internet Information Services web servers to perform credential harvesting, reconnaissance, and lateral movement. Detecting Praying Mantis's activities is not easy because of the volatile nature of its memory resident malware and the group's attention to operational security. A detailed description of this threat is available at CISOonline.com. Blogger hacks DEFCON A security specialist and blogger by the name of Reznok wrote last week about how he was able to dump a list of the names, email addresses and tickets of anyone who had bought a ticket online to the DEFCON 29 conference, which hosts, ironically, a large amount of people who value their anonymity. The hack was made possible through the confirmation page that displayed Reznok's purchased event ticket, along with his first name, Brandon, and his ticket barcode. The URL of the page was entirely unprotected, and modifying a single digit allowed him to access other attendees' confirmation pages. This access control vulnerability is known as IDOR, I-D-O-R, Insecure Direct Object Reference, and Reznok brought this to the attention of the event's guest manager, where it was quickly fixed. Almost every Friday, we host CISO Series video chats, bringing together cybersecurity experts to engage for an hour on specific topics and then opening up to cybersecurity speed dating after the chat is over to let the speakers and the audience get to know each other. We will not be hosting one this week because CISO Series' physical home base is moving, nor will we be hosting one next week because of Black Hat and DEF CON. But there is no time like the present to head on over to CISOseries.com and click on the Register for Video Chats button to join us for our chat about hacking cloud infrastructure on August 13th at the usual time, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. And remember, Thursday is our Week in Review show starting at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. You can join the conversation for this quick 20-minute chat with a security practitioner offering context to the week's news. I'm Steve Prentice, reporting for the CISO series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.